Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Thanks for tuning in to Art on the Creek. This is my home studio in Parker, Colorado. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, hello. <laughs> Good to have you back. We are going to do a review today on the Sakura Koi watercolor set that is a travel set. So it's supposed to be perfect for plein air. Although we're going to test it out in the studio, but I do have some pictures from a recent trip to a botanic garden. So let's see how this works. I'm really curious about these. They're student grade paints, but uh, I've heard really good things about them. So let's give it a try, shall we? Well, the Sakura Company, many of you probably know them from their fine liners, their pigment liners. I have several of them. Uh, they look like this, the Micron pens. Uh, many of you have used a lot of their products, I bet. But they also make these uh, Koi watercolors, and I've just heard such good things about them, and I've always been really curious. So this looks like a pretty good set to get us started. Um, like I said, these are student grade paints. That's not a negative. It just means that they're not going to be as light fast. And um, if you're working in a sketchbook, you know, that's totally fine. So let's open them up here. They're really affordable too. They come in other iterations. I happen to get just the, the 12 set. I like the case. That's really pretty nice. I like the feel of the plastic. It's, it's hard plastic, but it feels like it's not gonna break. Let's see here, it opens up to these little half pans. They look a little shy of half pans actually, uh, but that's okay. That's enough for what we're working on. We have a sponge in here to clean our brush and we've got a mixing palette space here and then one, two, three, five here. So with the brush and then it comes with, uh, excuse me, with the sponge and this big well here, you've got plenty of room to carry things. If you had a real small sketchbook, this would be nice because this is about 12 centimeters about by about eight and a half. So in inches, that is about four and a half by three and a half. So if you had a real small sketchbook and this, you'd be all set. Just band them together and you'll be good to go. So let's get this brush uh, opened up here. It has uh, this little cap here to keep the water in it while you're not using it. So we we'll wanna hang on to that. And many of you know this is kind of my pet peeve. I will lose that for sure. <laughs> I just wish they would make it big enough so that the brush could be assembled and, uh, and just stay in there like that. That To me, that makes more sense, but I didn't design it, so we're just gonna use it like this and it'll be just fine. Um, this is another one that opens the opposite way. Can you see we're turning it to the right, turning it to the right to open it and to the left to tighten it. In the United States, and I don't know where else, um, we always do righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're going to just uh, dunk this in my water over here. And let's see, tighten that up to the left. I got enough in there, I think. We'll go ahead and use that for our little paper towel. All right, let's try this again. You just squeeze a little bit and then the water comes out and you have a usable, there it goes. Now I can see it filling up there. There we go. And then the water will come out. So let's go ahead and uh, put a little drop of water on each of these paints. And then we can swatch them out. The cap posts, which is nice because that means I have one less thing to lose. And we'll just do some swatching real quick before we get into our painting. Let me move this down just a touch. All right, uh, we've got a white. I'll speed up this part here just to save a little bit of time, but I will let you know the colors as I'm swatching them. Top row, we've got Chinese white, lemon yellow, permanent yellow deep. Then we have a vermilion hue, crimson lake, Prussian blue, and cobalt blue hue, viridian hue, permanent green pale, yellow ochre, light red, and finally ivory black. All right, let's do some little mixing here and let's see what we can come up with. Let's try, uh, if we take the lemon yellow. I 
I'll speed this portion up again, but I'll just tell you briefly what colors I'm using to make these mixes. I've got a lemon yellow, the crimson lake, and then let's go in with that Prussian blue. Uh, granted, I could have put more pigment down. I really like the pale quality though, but we're getting a moody purple, a really good earthy orange, and a nice pale green. Uh, now let's mix the permanent yellow deep with that vermilion hue and that cobalt blue hue. And you can see the colors uh, really mix quite well. You get a nice purple, a beautiful bright orange, and a nice earthy green. Now let's try and mix a gray or a black. So let's just try and mix a, uh, a black. If we use this light red and the Prussian blue, yeah, that mixes a nice gray for us. Looks like that light red is staining. Let's try and mix it with the cobalt. See what comes up with there. Yet another nice gray. Uh, let's try mixing the Viridian with the Crimson Lake. That's a nice purpley gray. And it looks like that Viridian is staining as well. So some really great color options. Um, I think this is going to be a fun set to play with. I'll let you look a little closer. You can see what I mean by the, the chalkiness. It just seems like, well, it doesn't rub off, but it just doesn't seem quite like it's drying as translucent as uh, conventional professional watercolors would be. But I like the pigments. I like the vibrancy of it. I really like these mixes here. So uh, yeah, so let's let's have some fun with this. I just dried this with a heat tool so that we could, uh, so they could turn the page. Look at the size of these particles. I don't think these colors are normally granulating colors. Um, although it's cobalt hue, possible. I don't know, you guys. Look at that. That's a lot of granulation, and I don't, I don't know that it's genuine genuine pigment granulation or if just these particles are really big. So just keep that in mind. There might be some fun textures that come out of here. What I want to do, we went to the Botanic Garden. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Oh good, you can see part of that. And uh, I ended up taking some really good pictures. And here's one that I will put a link to. I just want to focus on this part of the photo here where we have the cute little bee. Um, just going to sketch this out a little bit with this one rose blossom. Maybe we'll throw a leaf or two in there and uh, catch the bee in the middle. So let's just try this. Let's try the bee first. We'll make a little little circle for his head. When I'm sketching, I just kind of look for big shapes and uh, just kind of get the basic shape of the bee in here. Just adding his wing, a few little dotted lines for his legs, and then I'm going to work out from the center. I'm kind of choosing some petals because I'm noticing this rose on the left is really overlapping this rose that I want to uh, that I want to focus on. So I'm kind of have to make a little bit of it up, but that's okay. Um, just getting all the big gestural strokes in here, and then we'll go over with uh, a little more firmer pressure, uh, a little firmer pressure. What I want to keep, and that's what you're seeing right now is uh, the lines that I'm trying to keep in the drawing. And I'm just kind of picking and choosing here how I want these petals to be shaped. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to look exactly like the rose. So if sketching is something that uh, intimidates you a little bit, don't get bogged down in the details. Just get your basic shapes down and go from there. All right, let's start with uh, getting this a little bit wet here so we can kind of get some interest in the center and beyond around the bee. And I'm going to go in with that lemon yellow first. I'll just let that kind of hang out here in these petals. And then we want to go with kind of a, a peachy color. So I'm going to go into the 
Crimson Lake. But I'm going to mix in some of that lemon yellow. And add a little more pink to it. As I'm painting, I can really tell that these are hobby or student grade paints. They just kind of don't act like professional paints, but that's not an inhibitor at all. I'm really loving how they're going down very, very sheer and light, and I'm able to get a really, really thin wash with them, yet still have a lot of pigment to deal with. So, so far, so good. All right, now I'm gonna go back into that lemon yellow. And let's just kind of punch up some of these areas here. And on the B, I think I'm going to go with the yellow ochre. Now what I do like is that some of these shadows kind of have a purple cast to them. So let's go back into that Crimson Lake and let's mix it with some of this uh, cobalt hue and see what kind of a purple we can come up with. It's almost gray, but it really definitely has a purple tint to it. So let's start doing a little bit of this up here. We'll leave some space. This travel brush is really pretty fun to use. You'll notice that um, I don't have the cap posted and yeah, you guessed it, I've lost it, but it, it'll turn up, it'll turn up. <laughs> but I really like this little brush. It's, uh, it's easy to use and I like that I can get it to uh, perform with some dry brush technique as well. There we go. The paints are acting exactly like you would expect a watercolor to act, so there's no hurdle there. I can put down a wet on dry and then come back in with water and let it travel that way, or I can use a wet on wet and uh, blend it that way. So I'm really having no trouble at all having these paints perform like you would expect a watercolor to perform. Um, how can I explain that I can tell that they're uh, they're student grade as opposed to professional? I think it's really just that kind of chalkiness and it's it's just kind of an overall fog that's on top of the colors. Now, it, it may or may not be an issue to you. I will continue to use this set and I'll like it. And the one thing that I like about it is that it's not so precious that I'm going to be worried about losing it or having it get damaged. Um, so that's something if you wanted to keep your professional paints at home and have a really decent uh, student set to take out with you. This one's nice. This one would fit the bill for me and um, I think it would work for a lot of artists. I like the travel brush, um, 12 colors that all mix really well so you don't really have to worry about any issues about not having a color. You can mix just about everything you like and um, I have a feeling that uh, I'll get a lot of good out of this particular little set here. Let's get some green going here. I'm going to mix some of that viridian with the yellow ochre. Get that nice and deep. There we go. I'll just kind of make up something here because we don't really have that in the photo, but kind of just make up what roses do here. This is where we can really just sketch with our paintbrush. I'll sketch in the sepals and the ovary and attach all of that to the stem. And then I might as well mix that cobalt with uh, this Indian red to get a nice gray for our bee. There we go, that one will work. Now I am mixing my black here because I do want to have this particular bee, I want it to be a little more of a, a dimensional black. I want it to have a little more texture into it. 
Um, it's just a matter of personal preference, whatever you want it to look like. You could definitely use the ivory black. That's not a problem. In fact, they give it to you. Uh, in, in, when you get a set like this, it would be a really good idea, especially if you're a new watercolorist, to take all of these colors and mix them with the Chinese white, see what they look like when they're brought into the pastel range, and then mix them with the ivory black and see what they are uh, when they're brought down to a lower hue. So any of these uh, mixes that you want to create on your own, I really recommend whatever set you're using to just really kind of play with it before you're out in the field using it, just so you kind of know what power you have behind your colors, because uh, some of them might surprise you. Um, in fact, I don't know if a lot of you knew, but if you mix that ivory black with a yellow, you can come up with a beautiful earthy green. So it's a really nice color to have. Don't discount it. If you get a set with ivory black and Chinese white, there really are some good colors. Now, truth be told, I don't use them that often, but they're nice to have. And they really are kind of like a, oh yeah, I can use that one too. <laughs> so this set, I'm glad that it does include both of those. And with the rest of the 10 colors that are in here, you know, you've got plenty of mixing range. And uh, as I'm finishing up this B here, you can kind of see, I hope, that uh, it gave it a little bit more shape than it would have had I used the flat ivory black. All right, let's take a look at maybe adding uh, this little rose leaf on here. So let's just sketch this leaf in here, only let's make it lying on its side. I'm starting with the yellow, just to have a real pale line. And then I'm gonna go into that Viridian yellow ochre mix that I did uh, for the ovary and the stem and the sepals there and just kind of adding the dark on top of it in gradual uh, degrees. And then I will leave some space so that the veins of the leaf can show through. Now that I've got that Prussian blue out though, I think I'm going to add a little bit of shadow around the bee and up on his wings as well. All right, let's take a look at drying this and let's see what we think. Let's get a few highlights on our bee here. have a, uh, a couple of colored pencils here. Let's just see if we can add some nuances here. This is one of my favorite things to do, you guys, to go over watercolor in colored pencil and really get those defined shadows in, those tight spaces, really adding some of that peach onto the leaf and uh, the purple as well, right around the ovary and the sepals on the flower. I really enjoyed this entire process. I think that this set is a lot of fun. All right, the only thing I have to say is I've lost the cap. <laughs> so, I, all I can say is I know who I am and uh, this, this style, you guys, is rough for me. It's too many parts, too many parts, but uh, maybe you guys don't have that issue. Uh, so here it is, the Sakura Koi set, and uh, I really like it. I, I do like how small it is. I do like how compact it is and uh, very easy to use, uh, easy to have. And it might be just the thing that makes your plein air a whole lot of fun this summer. So that's my review on this one. I would give it two thumbs up. It's exactly what I expected for a student grade watercolor. Able to get some decent mixes out of it, but I really like the textures that come out on these paints, especially on this B paper. So have a great day, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye now.